It is 100% possible to say things with our lips and not to mean them in our heart. It is not only possible, but it is in general probable. And most do it. There are probably hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of believers who cry out to Jesus. They call themselves believers, yet in their hearts, it's something else. There are people out there who smile at others and act like they're friendly and this and that, yet in their hearts, there's hatred. There are people out there who say, yes, I forgive you. I have forgiven you. I've forgiven these people in prayer to themselves, to other people. Yet in their hearts, there's no forgiveness. This is so dangerous. This is why a posture of submission is necessary for the believer because we don't know what we're doing. And not only that, we don't know how to do what we, what it is that we don't know what we're doing. We don't know anything. There is no goodness or self-righteousness in us. We receive the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ and he, the Holy Spirit within us, it's no longer you who lives, but it is Christ through you, right? So now the Holy Spirit is going to give you all these new inclinations to do good things. Forgive people. Let the Lord heal you from that. You know, da, 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 whatever it is. And even then you're going to say, okay, I forgive them, you know, but we must understand that these are processes. The Holy Spirit will give us the inclination to do certain things so that we would now agree with our free will. Yes, let's begin that process. You know what I mean? Because God is, is, he's never going to supersede our free will. That's why he gave us free will. He loved us enough that he said, I'm going to give you a choice. You can follow me in my ways. You could follow Jesus Christ, who is the truth in the way and the life, or you can do things your way. So again, many will say with their mouth, yeah, I will follow Jesus all day. Yeah, in their hearts, they do not submit. They do not, they grieve the Holy Spirit. They grieve the transformation process and the things that the Lord wants to do within them by remaining in their self-righteousness, which is sin, by remaining in their pride, which is sin. They say, yeah, Lord, have your way. And then they do things their way. And this probably 95% of the time isn't on purpose. It's not on purpose. You know, if, if people knew that they were not truly saved because they claim salvation with their lips, yet their hearts are far from God, they don't actually have a relationship with him, that all the good works they do, in fact, aren't Holy, Holy Spirit led. They are just, you know, what they think they should do. I should dress this way. I should talk this way. I should go to church on Sundays. I should, I should, I should. If they are following humans and not God himself, then that is the type of believer that you end up with. It is someone who is lukewarm. And you know, <laughs> the truth is if you're not on fire for the Lord, you're probably not a saved person. You can't have a living faith that produces the gift of the Holy Spirit and not be on fire for the Lord. And is that fire going to look different for everybody? Sure. But is that ever going to produce, is the Holy Spirit within someone ever going to produce a lukewarm believer? No. All believers will go through seasons. Will go through difficult seasons, yes. But the word says that a righteous man falls down, he gets back up. He gets back up. That's why we're called in this race to endure. We're called to endure. Endure. Hold on. Stand firm. Because that's what this is about. Victory was achieved at Calvary. We are all saved people, and it is by our faith that we should receive that salvation. We don't save ourselves. We don't even seek Jesus Christ. Nobody seeks righteousness. Nobody seeks God. That's what the word says, because we don't know how to do it. And then we don't know how to do, again, I'm going to say, we don't know how to do what we don't know how to do. We don't know really anything. We're just like the blind and dead walking around, and then Jesus touches us, and we begin to bloom. And in order to continue blooming, he says... I want to deal with you on certain things. And then you can either continue in this process or you can be a believer that says, okay, you know, I, yes, I forgive them again, but in your heart, you don't. And we do these things for the Lord. You know, people say the world says you don't forgive people for, for, for them. You forgive them for yourself. And it's just such a prideful, like even when it comes to forgiveness, the world has found some way to pervert forgiveness that it's not for those you're forgiving. It's actually for you. That's not true. That's another lie from hell. 
That's what they say, right? You don't, forgiveness isn't for them. It's for you. That's not true. And if that's how you really feel about it, then you got a heart issue. Forgiveness is always for them. Ultimately, it's for the father because we want all souls for the Lord. We want all to turn to the Lord. But forgiveness is for the person. It is. And it's for you last. And that's how everything works. God, then people, then you. That's how everything works. And there's a lot of heart issues out here going on. And it's, it's, it's a lot about forgiveness. There's a lot of secret pride going on with believers that are out here, you know, calling themselves believers, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. They are on fire with saying the name Jesus. They're on fire to call themselves a believer. Many of them have even platforms. They're on fire for the likes. They're on fire for the attention. But because they don't have the Holy Spirit, it's not spirit-led work and it's garbage. It is. It's garbage. Whatever's not led by the Holy Spirit is, it's just garbage. It's a dirty rag before God. They remain wicked in their sins because you could do all the good things you want to do. If your heart is full of pride, you're not saved and what you've done will perish. You're not walking in, in, in you know, everlasting life. You don't have a promise of eternity with the Lord because you, you allow yourself to remain in darkness. That's why the word says, you know, even Satan masquerades as an angel of light because it's easy to do that. It's easy for us to say with our mouths. It's easy to do that and then not to mean it in our hearts and how so the question becomes so then how do you know how do you know that in your heart how do I you know how do I know I'm not doing this then how do I know that I'm not one of these these fake believers how do I know that I'm not a counterfeit Christian by submitting every day one day at a time the word says don't worry about tomorrow it's got enough of its troubles worry about today well you know not worry but concern yourself for today and God's gracious for doing that. I mean, imagine, imagine if you had to take this whole thing on by yourself, but we don't, we couldn't. And God knows that. And so we don't, you know, he sent us Jesus Christ who sent us Holy Spirit. And now we, we have an entire Bible, you know what I mean? And even the Bible, even the Bible, we have the Holy Spirit that reads it to us. Like we're little kids. Cause we, even the Bible, we don't know how to read. Cause we, we, you know, even, even we're even told how to worship. We need to worship in spirit and in truth. And it's, you know, the fallen humans, the fallen state of the human nature is such that we do need to be handheld and walked into this walk. That when we become, when the Lord first finds us, we are baby Christians and we do need to mature, be matured by the Lord little by little. Nobody becomes this on fire believer just like that. The word says to wrestle into your salvation with fear and with trembling. And that fear is the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Everything works in tandem for the believer. And the Lord does it like that because he loves us very much. But you must do things his way. You must do things his way because if you don't do things in the way that the word says, you're going to end up one of these fake believers who says that da, 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 with your mouth, but your heart is far from God. Your heart is full of hate and your mouth likes to gossip a lot. And even if you look at people and you smile, hi, yeah, right. Then you walk away and you're like, Ugh, that's a hearty person. You know what God, one thing God hates, uh, the Bible specifically says is hearty eyes. People that look at other people like... Because those people put themselves first and they put themselves above other people, above God's people, above God himself, therefore. You have to understand that the word says to humble yourself. Pride comes before a fall. You can either humble yourself or you can fall. You can fall right on your face in all your pride. And then even then, even then... You better humble yourself. It's not like, oh, you fall on, on your face and your pride and then you get back up and you get dusted off and it's all, everything's all fine. No, you're going to have to humble yourself. That's the way that God said to do things. You have to humble yourself. You have to humble yourself because if you fall down in pride, you're still going to have to humble yourself enough to repent or you can sit in your little mud puddle of pride forever. Sure. And then even some people do. And they continue to call themselves believers as they sit in their mud puddle of pride and they walk around all cranky. That's why there's people that call themselves believers that are just miserable and they're mean and they're going to church every Sunday. But they're, what is they called? A devil in a church hat. That's what that's called. A devil in a church hat. 
because they they these are the counterfeit believers because they they live they are children of satan in fact and it's sure it looks on the outside everything looks in place right there's a big difference between niceness and kindness. There's a big difference between happiness and joy. If you don't want to be one of these counterfeit believers, if you want to be a truly saved person, you need to submit because in your submission, the Holy Spirit will lead you. He will guide you. He will teach you. He will correct you. And God chastises those whom he loves. If you don't like to be corrected or chastised, well, how do you expect to receive love from the Lord? He's trying to make you holy. He's trying to bring you closer to him. He's trying to make you like Jesus Christ. You have the spirit of God within you. You have the ability to resonate with that spirit and with every fiber of your being, you know, because it's not you who becomes righteous or holy. You receive the Holy Spirit and it's him through you. It's no longer you who lives. It's Christ within you. But even then, he, 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 he works to make you this fit temple for his purposes. Hallelujah. To make you fit for his purposes. And he wants to heal you from your old stuff so he can use you. And he's going to bless you on the path. Like there's literally no downfall to submitting. It's just you have to be willing to submit. You have to be willing to put your pride down. You have to be willing to put your shame down, to put your vanity down, to say, I don't know best. I don't know which way to go. I don't know anything. I don't know. Teach me. He will. Because that is willing. That's putting your free will down. That's making an actual choice. It's not just saying the words. It's about the state of our hearts. And you can't, you have to know you're a sinner in need of a Messiah. You can't just say, okay, I'm saved. Okay. But have you, you know, acknowledged your sins? Have you repented for your sins? Have you looked at yourself? there's a process and a time to do these things and the Lord will tap everyone on the shoulder at a specific time generally not early on in your walk but at some point you know when you're a baby Christian he's not going to fault you for many things he's going to just like love you up bring you into himself on take you under his wing and then one day he's going to say just like when you're growing up when you were young and not all of us had those kind of households so some for some of us myself included this was the first time we ever you know had a loving parent we ever had someone tap us on the shoulder and say okay well let's not do that let's do you know what I'm saying so it's different for everyone we can't be out here judging unrighteously but at some point for every believer yes the Lord will tap you on the shoulder and say okay now we're going to take a look at our you know at, at, at what I want you to work on da, 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 da. we're going to take a look at what you want and then you know the Holy Spirit will lead you to repent he'll lead you to wow I didn't realize I was doing that I'm sorry Lord you know teach me what well, how should I and he will and then the state of your heart will begin to change. The state of your heart will begin to be clean. Search me and clean my heart. Oh, oh Lord, renew, renew a, 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 forgive me, renew a steadfast heart within me. Renew a steadfast spirit. Yes. Search and clean my heart. Renew within me a clean heart and a steadfast spirit. God, forgive me for totally misquoting that scripture. It just came to me. I wonder if I can find it. Of course, I am driving as usual. So, Yes. We don't want to be counterfeit believers. We want to be fit for duty. We want to be pleasing before the Lord. Okay. We want to be useful to other people. We want to be someone who goes before the Lord one day and that he doesn't say to us, depart from me. I never knew you. He doesn't want your perfection. And that's what people that hold on to their pride and self-righteousness are just like, I'm a believer. Da, 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 da. And they may do everything seemingly right on the outside. Like I said, they might look the part. They might even act the part. But yet their hearts are still far from Jesus Christ because they act unto their own self-righteousness. And that is not who he came for. Because these are people that refuse to put their free will down. You could say whatever you want with your with your mouth, but if you don't put your free will down to let the Holy Spirit in, you're useless to the Lord. He didn't. He doesn't want your perfection. He doesn't. He didn't. You know, just like he was rejected, Jesus Christ on earth by people who were like, "We don't need you." If you don't need him because you know what you're doing, I guess you're perfect. And I guess you're not a sinner in need of salvation. So why are you calling on the name of Jesus? Here we are. Psalm 51, 10 through 19. I won't read it all, but 10, it begins. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. My God, restore unto me the joy of thy spirit. Oh my gosh, I'm driving the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. 
Then I will teach transgressors the ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. You see that? Do you see that process? Create in me a clean heart, number one. Restore a spirit within me, Lord. This is asking of, this is a posture of submission, number two. Cast me not away from thy presence, because now you're going to be allowed into his presence because you're not rebu you're re rebuking him. You're not refusing to let him make you a clean heart and renew your spirit. So now you're in his presence. Now take not your Holy Spirit from me. Now you got his Holy Spirit. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Now he's going to give you that joy joy of your salvation, of his salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Now the Lord's going to withhold, uphold you. Then he's going to send you out. Then you're going to be able to teach transgressors thy ways, his ways. Then sinners are going to be converted unto the Lord because of you, because you submitted to the Lord enough that you let him clean your heart up and fix your spirit. You got into his presence. He gave you the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Then you're going to be a saved person who is going to be used to save others, okay? Follow the Lord's way. Jesus Christ is, is not just a name we call upon. He is the truth. He is the way, and he is the only life. Hallelujah. God bless you.